Hello, MegCabot fans. It's a very special day today. Uh, you'll be watching MegCabot sitting down with the HarperCollins Library marketing guru, Lainey Mays, super fan of Meg. Um, and they'll be talking for about 30 minutes, but please be sure to ask questions and leave comments. We'll get to those at the end. And you'll also be entered for a chance to win a finished copy of No Judgments when it goes on sale. Super fun. So without further ado, we'll get to the interview. Enjoy. Hi, guys. Hi. Thank you so much for being here, Meg. Well, first, I think we should toast. We have our <gasps> yes. screwdrivers. So yes. It's never too early for this. Very important hurricane drink. Right. And it's mm -hmm. so hot in New York right now mm -hmm. that this is very refreshing. We're actually having a little bit of a hurricane. We're having a, the remnants of Hurricane Barry right now. Oh, so it's kind of good that we're having this little hurricane party. I mean, hurricanes are very serious. Yes. We're having a little fun with it right now. But um, that's kind of what you have to do. You have to have a sense of humor about it, because right. why not? Well, before we get into the book, I just want to like reiterate again how thankful I am for you to be here. I am the biggest fan, and I am the envy of all my friends, because your books mean so much to me. So Aww. thank you. I just remember like growing up and reading, and I like have this really specific memory of just having this like voracious need to read and like knowing that I can be quirky and learn and you just like didn't talk down to me and anyway so thank you so much Aww. I am stoked to be here oh, so well thank you and thank you so much for having me of course. This is fun. so we're gonna get into the book which is no judgments it comes out in September yes. um, and this is for our adult fans yeah. um, do you want to tell us a little bit about the book well, yeah, it's actually um, uh, the first book in a new series that I'm doing that is set on a small tropical island called Little Bridge. There's actually a little novella that precedes it, but you don't actually have to have read that novella to understand what's going on in No Judgments. And it is about a young lady who moves to the island, and her timing could be a little better because a few months after she gets there, the island is hit by a hurricane. and the reason it's called Little Bridge is because it's connected to um, the Florida Keys by Little Bridge, and the Little Bridge gets washed out, and so everybody's trapped there for the for the hurricane. But um, she makes some friends and maybe uh, finds a little bit of romance Ooh. along the way. So yeah, I mean that's a thing that happens for everybody in hurricanes. I mean things wash away and you can't get to it or if you're stuck there. Yeah. And you actually stayed because you live in the Key West. That is correct. It is, a, it is based on a, a real life uh, thing that happened to me actually during Hurricane Irma. Um, obviously if there's a hurricane coming your way and you're told to evacuate, you should evacuate. We have um, a little asterisk that's like, please do not <laughs> stay for yeah, that. Don't do what the girl in this book did, which is she did not evacuate. She had many opportunities to do so and she did not, but she actually had some reasons why she didn't evacuate. And, and when you read the book, you'll find out what they are. But, um, some of them actually were my own reasons why mm -hmm. I didn't evacuate. Um, one of which was that there had been another hurricane right before, um, Irma, which happened in, um, Texas, Hurricane Harvey. And so there was no gas actually to mm -hmm. get out and in, in in the Florida Keys where I live in Key West, there's only one road. And so if you have to drive out and you have no gas, it's, you're kind of out of luck. And we didn't realize that Irma was coming quite as quickly as it did. Um, we were told it was going to Miami. So we're like, yeah, we're fine. And then um, we were not fine. Um, but we did have a generator and we had um, we had some really great hurricane food that we yes. had gathered. This is, if you're wondering why some we Some inspiration. Have, yeah, maybe not the healthiest <laughs> options, but we felt like we were, we were gonna be okay. And um, we had plenty of bottled water oh. as well. Um, and um, lots of friends who were staying as well. And we also had a very sick cat, which in, although there's a dog on this cover, there's actually a dog in the story as well, but there's a cat um, that the heroine, Bree, has just adopted, who's a very elderly cat named Gary, um, who had just had all his teeth removed um, because he has, this is very interesting, feline stomatitis, <laughs> in case you want to know, um, which is a disease that cats can get where they become allergic to their own teeth. And so yeah. my cat actually had that, a very elderly yeah. cat named Allie that I just adopted, and she had had to have all her teeth removed. And we were like, we can't oh, travel yeah. with our, our little baby. Um, so we're like, we'll be fine. You know, we were. We were very lucky. But yeah, if you're told to evacuate. Yeah. 
I mean, you have all kinds of fun animal names in the book. I, I mean, yes. you're known for giving animals great names oh, in general. Oh, I didn't know that, but thank but, you. But, to me, anyway. But they, there's lots of fun ones in the book, like um, the 90210 characters. <laughs> um, each dog ah. has a name, or like Gary, um, Bob, all the dogs. Yes. So there are a lot of fun names, and Star Wars names are thrown in, which yeah. is exciting. Um, and I was showing Meg earlier that I didn't mean to do this, but it just kind of worked out this way. I went to get notes, and I had my little Sheba sticky notes, and they're all in my book for this. So it all kind of worked out. I was really getting in the spirit early. Um, so this story, there's a backstory that it yeah. is true. So right. do you want to talk about yeah. that Yeah, well, too? so something that happened after Irma was that, well, we had no power. We had power because we had a generator. Um, but everybody's cell phones went out. There was no cellular power on the island, no internet. Um, so nobody had any way to communicate. Now, the news was saying that we had been wiped out. There was, the Key West didn't exist anymore. And the same thing happens in the book, that everybody's told that Little Bridge Island no longer exists. But we were, we were actually up the keys. The damage was much greater. But we had no way to, to tell people, hey, we're okay. Um, but we, in my house, we have a very ancient thing called a landline. And the landline still worked. Not very many people had landlines. Um, and But kind of word spread around the island that we had a landline. So people were coming to my house that I didn't even know and asking if they could use my phone to call people and let them know that they're okay. And we were like, sure, that's fine. Um, being a writer, though, I was kind of eavesdropping a little bit <laughs> because it was so interesting to me to, to hear um, what people were saying, as long as they were speaking English. Some people were speaking, I mean, all languages, Croatian, and we yeah. had Spanish. But um, one young lady who showed up on my porch, um, her name was Brett. She's an amazing young woman. She um, asked if she could call her mother, and I said, sure. And I was a little bit eavesdropping. And she was telling her mother that a thing that had happened was that the hurricane came so quickly, and there was kind of so little warning. People had just left, and they left their animals, their pets, behind thinking that they would be able to get back quickly to the island. And what had happened in Key West was that actually the road washed out and people couldn't get back. Um, and so they had no way to get back to their pets. And what Britt wanted to do was she asked her mom, can you post on Facebook, since obviously we didn't have the internet, um, letting people know, any Key West residents, that um, if they had left their pets behind, um, to call Britt's mom and leave a message that... Um, with their name and their address, don't post it on the internet that they, you know, had left their house um, empty, and the kind of pets they were, and how they could break into, how Brit could break into <laughs> their house and feed their animals. And I was like, wow. For I mean, first of all, I couldn't believe that anyone would leave their pets behind. So I have to admit, I was a little judgy about that, which is one of the reasons why this book is called <laughs> No Judgments. Um, also, though, I had not evacuated, so don't judge me, <laughs> which we had been told to do. So um, when Brooke got off the phone, I was like, what? What? I mean, people didn't, they left their pets, and she's like, hey, no judgments. Um, you know, people, there's lots of reasons why this might have happened. You know, maybe they had to snag a ride with somebody else. Maybe they have five dogs and they couldn't fit them in the car. But whatever, it, we can't say, you know, that, that they're bad people because they, then they won't call and then the pets will suffer. Mm -hmm. And so um, people started leaving messages with her mom. And every day she would come over and pick up the messages. And she, mm -hmm. had, she had like a little axe. And we, I think we loaned her maybe a pair of... Um, those oh my gosh <laughs> I gotta go break into yeah. this house and she and she started breaking into people's houses and feeding their pets and we gave her um our leftover cat food by that time my cat could only eat soft food so we ate all this dry food and um she was getting um the I think that the the SPCA gave her stuff and she was going out there and doing that and I was like this is the best thing I've ever seen I loved it so she kind of became the model for the heroine of my book Brie um, and she knows it, so it's okay. She's she's fine with it. Nothing else in this book that happens to Brie is at all based on Brit. So um, Brie, uh, the fact that she has fled her life back in New York City, um, all the reasons, like her personal problems, nothing is based on Brit. The fact that she has this um, very hot affair with this guy who is an islander who's a carpenter and... Um, that does not happen to Brett. Brett is totally happy in her own relationship <laughs> right now. But it was really, really a great um, experience, that part of it. Um, to see somebody just put themselves out there and help so many pets. So that was really great. And that's that was kind of the heart of the book. Yeah. So what was the aftermath like after 
the hurricane. I know some restaurants kind of gave out stuff. Is, yes. Are there organizations I mean, for people, pets even? Yeah, people came together. Um, a lot of the restaurants that were still, a lot of those people hadn't evacuated, so they started handing out food for free, mm. cooking uh, meals every day for people who were still there. Um, you could show up at certain times and just get an amazing steak dinner. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, the SPCA started um, coming out, giving free animal awesome. um, medical service. All of the vets that were still on the island mm. were offering that as well. Um, one thing that I did not know was that before the hurricane, um, they were trying to foster out as many animals as they could. Mm. So if you um, could take pets into your home, or if you were evacuating and you could take pets with you, um, that was really great. So something that they always ask is if you could donate to your local SPCA or animal shelter, that's really great because then they use that money to um, you know, help people, you don't know it, but you're helping people who have hurricanes mm. in their area because you're giving to people who are actually um, helping to foster those kinds of pets. So it was, it was really, I mean, I hate to say it, it was a very heartwarming experience to be yeah. in this hurricane. I, had, I was very um, privileged that, you know, I had a generator and, and a landline, so we were able to be pretty much okay until the water went out. And then, <laughs> and then it wasn't so great because then the, we were getting warnings every day not to drink the water, but fortunately wow. we had... Yeah, that's why you have a lot of supplies. Yes. Yeah, you can Would, warm yourself up. I would not recommend that. Not for the kids. And then cool yourself down. Not for the kids. <laughs> this stuff's okay. <clears throat> so, when Bree comes to the island, she's there mm -hmm. for like three months or so, um, and there's this big. She's she's going. We're not going to tell you everything, but she's coming from this this experience. She had she's a bad time where she was. Yes. Trying to find herself and yes. to get back into some things she loves. Um, but there's this island pride. Is that something that's big <laughs> in Key West? Yeah, you know, you, um, there's, it's a very touristy town. Key West mm. is a, is a resort town, and much like Little Bridge is a resort town, and they get most of their money from tourist mm. dollars, and so, um, you know, if you're somebody who actually lives there, it's not that you look down on the tourists at all, because that's where your money's coming from, but you kind of, you know, you're used to people coming and not staying very long, and, um, and then leaving, so, you know, unless you've really stayed for a long time you're not considered a local and um, they actually call people who are born in Key West their conks and so yeah and if you're not a conk then you're a freshwater and you know you're not you don't know how to do anything pretty much and um, but once you've been through a hurricane or two then you might get a little bit of cred so she Bree is very concerned because she's actually had been coming to the island for quite a few years with her family on vacation and then she's lived there for three months so she's like I She's not a conk because it's not Key West, but she's, she's like, I'm not a freshwater, but of course people are accusing her of that and they're very, they're a little judgmental about her skills. Yeah. So once again, no judgment. She's <laughs> like, hey, I can handle myself. She, she really thinks she can. Um, another reason she might have wanted to evacuate, but she's got <laughs> she the sick them. cat and she's got, you know, she doesn't have a car. So she's, she's, got, some, she's got some issues. So, you know, I, I really feel like we need to not be so judgmental of of people and their reasons for some of the decisions they make. But however, I have to say I'm one of the judgiest people in the world, so I'm trying to be less so. <laughs> so there, there's a great PS section that's coming too with a lot of like recipes and fun yes, things. Yes, how to make some of the delicious food oh, if you know your power's parts. gone out and you need to make something very yummy. Um, you can and also doesn't need refrigeration. Right. That will be in the right. PS, yeah. So there's this saying, like, hope for the best, prepare for the worst. Exactly. But I feel like that's kind of Bree's experience. <laughs> it book. is. She actually makes some the recipes that are going to be in the yeah. book, yeah. So she, as she's going along, she's trying to find who she is and dealing with these things, meeting Drew. Like, what are some characteristics that you, like, admire about her or that you had fun writing for Bree? Well, she's very determined and um, doesn't give up easily. She's very... Um, resourceful obviously the fact that she went and saved all those animals much like Britt um, I thought was amazing it is very hot after a hurricane I am not a person who can deal with hot weather I don't know why I live in Florida um, I have air conditioning but um, she you know the fact that she did that was amazing to me um, and and she stuck it out and she I think really proved that she is maybe a little bit of a fresh water but she's getting there as far as <laughs> hanging out with the locals and um you know I thought she, I thought she did a good job yeah I don't um, you know I'm judging my own book now but <laughs> well we have so many more meanings to the title we can just keep writing I know that's crazy 
Um, but yeah, and so I'm excited about this new series. And so yeah, it, also at the end of the PS, there's a little bit about the next book in the series, which is the one I'm working on now. Um, it's not going to be about Brie. Um, it's about characters who are actually in this book, um, at least one of them. And um, it's the sheriff. And he may be having a romance with the town librarian. Some people might I, relate to these. I know. Um, and I was originally calling it The Sheriff and the Librarian only because that's literally what it's about. <laughs> um, that will not be the title. We're working on the title right now. So um, if you have any suggestions, please. Just, no, we're, 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 we're going to get it. We're getting there. It's going to be good. Right. And I, I think what's also really fun about the book is that every beginning of every chapter, there's a little something about yes. the storm. There but is I, a storm tip, yes. Like this one, just as an example, like risk of electrocution, drowning, and other physical threats can accompany hurricanes. But in the chapter, there's like some electricity flowing between the characters. Exactly. Thank you for noticing that. That is, every writer loves it when somebody <laughs> actually notices their incredibly clever thing that was <laughs> but yeah I really wanted to because you know when um you're actually in a hurricane you're you're constantly getting handed out now we were not getting them by phone because all the phones mm. were were completely dead but we were getting handed um you know oh, <laughs> notices paper? yeah oh. um by that time it was too late <laughs> right <laughs> we were getting notices about food will be um we actually got um those meals that the army gets oh like pack dry there, it's in there or, no or you the... can um you can burn on a on a little oh. if i could speak i would tell you it's not the it's, not that. it's very early for me for um i i don't really get going until about three o'clock in the afternoon Just have another um, yeah <laughs> meals ready to eat yes the, ar meals the ready, um, yeah. army came and was handing those out to people and so we got little noses saying like in the public's parking lot at 1 p.m meals ready to eat oh, will nice. be handed out and people were you know trying to decide which ones they because they had like uh, Chinese food that you could you could get like sweet and sour chicken or some people wanted the chicken cacciatore and so people were trading no one actually really at the, the, it was a I don't think people really needed them <laughs> because most people, the restaurants were still serving at that point, but people wanted to see how they tasted. Mm. And it was decided that the sweet and sour, ch sour chicken was the best. Oh, really? Yeah, no, it was delicious. Well, I'm glad it worked yeah. out and it was yeah. edible and <laughs> good. No, they were delicious. Good. Um, so I, so talk about, let's talk about Drew. So Drew is a love interest. Yes. And he, um, you want to say a little bit about him? Drew is, um, a character, a local who actually Brie knew for quite a while because she's right. a waitress. She works as a waitress in the town uh, popular cafe, and so she's been serving him breakfast for months. And he never really paid any attention to her um, until he noticed that she was not evacuating, and he took great umbrage at that, as he should, um, and informed her that she should get out of town. And she was like, "No, if you're staying. I'm staying." <laughs> and also, she has this cat and a lot of other problems. It makes it difficult. A lot of people have problems. Um, it's also very expensive to evacuate. And where are you going to go? And this particular hurricane encompassed the entire state of Florida, as as Irma did. So you know, you're going to go stay in a hotel and still be hit by the hurricane. Mm -hmm. It's a lot. So um, that's how they started sparring with one another. Um, and so he was an intellectually challenging person to deal mm -hmm. with, but also extremely good looking. So. And that he's, uh, works at restoring old homes and um, is a carpenter and um, has a ex large extended family on the island. So it yeah. seemed like everywhere Brie went, she ran into somebody that was related to him. So she was not too happy about that for <laughs> a little bit of the time. But then as things got, the storm approached, um, she started being a little happier about it because um, she started finding that she had places to go and people to help her out. Yeah. Which he turned out to be kind of willing to do a little bit. But he's also a dog lover, and he has uh, three dogs when the book begins. And he um, named them all Bob because he feels like dogs are um, pack animals, and he is the leader of the pack, so why should he give his dogs different names, which Bree is horrified by. Um, and that's actually based on a friend of mine named Rooney who also has three dogs named Bob, which I think is hilarious. Oh, is hilarious. And it does work out. They they, they you know, listen Because she says if one of the dogs is doing something wrong, they're probably all doing something wrong, so you just yell, Bob, stop it! And they're all like, okay. <laughs> they just hear the high pitch. They're for the... very cute dogs, yeah. Oh. So well, that's... that's actually funny that it's... Yeah. Yes, it is based, based on, on that. True thing. And there's an incident in the book that also concerns Drew where she, uh, Brie, they're at a party and they observe someone who's mistreating a dog, which is actually based on a true situation. The first night that I moved to Key West, um, we were in a bar and it was actually a barbecue restaurant, which was also a bar. And there was a gentleman who had a dog and he kept kicking, every time the dog would 
you know, kind of cry to leave the bar, the gentleman would give the dog a kind of violent nudge with his foot to keep it from crying. And um, another gentleman at the bar said to this guy, if you kick that dog one more time, I'm going to lay you out. Wow. And um, the guy did. He kicked the dog one more time. And the guy got up and he punched him in the face and knocked him right off the bar stool. And um, the guy who'd kicked the dog was very upset by this, as you might be although you're a dog kicker, so you kind of deserve it, I thought. And he jumped up and he ran out of the restaurant, leaving the dog, who stayed with the bartender. And uh, we were all like, wow, we're, why did we move here? <laughs> this was like the Wild West or something. And about two minutes later, the police showed up with the guy who'd been sh punched in the face. And um, they said, this guy says, you punched him in the face. And everyone in the bar was frozen. We were like... We came here from Manhattan. We don't know what's happening. And um, the, the bartender said, he didn't punch him in the face, but that guy kicked that dog. And so the police arrested the guy for kicking the Good. dog and nobody. It was pretty, yeah, you it was pretty deserve exciting. It. And so that actually happens in the book as well mm -hmm. with Drew. Um, you so, deserve it at that point. Right? Yeah, I mean, you can't go around kicking dogs. That's mm. animal cruelty. And you, I mean, in my opinion, I love animals, so I don't want to see that happen. So... Um, that's actually an example of something that really happened in Key West. My first night there. Wow. And um, the bartender ended up adopting the dog. Oh. I know. It's such a great, mm. great place to live because people That's really nice. love animals there. They love people too, but not dog kickers. Right. Okay. Um, so, well, and so for Drew, who has all of these dogs, he he's kind of contradictory. Like, he loves these dogs. He has the, <laughs> the Bob names. Um, but then he doesn't really judge Brie like everybody no. else. Well, and so, he judges her for not evacuating. Well, that <laughs> probably a good reason. Um, but, like, what makes them work? What, what qualities do they share that makes them work? I think that they're both kind of lost souls in a way. Mm -hmm. They've both had some um, family conflicts. Um, they both feel like they're kind of out there. But they're both a little bit... Um, dreamers and artists in a way i mean brie has kind of always had this dream of being an artist drew is definitely artistic and they both can't, haven't really followed kind of the typical set kind of plan that a lot of people expect mm -hmm. um especially you know kind of in mainstream america where you're gonna go and have this like nine to five job or you're gonna go to college and you know get married right away and have kids that neither of them have done that and, mm -hmm. and they're both kind of rebelling against that and um Brie in particular feels very lost and doesn't know what she kind of she kind of does know what she wants but she feels like maybe that's not w what she should want and that's kind of how she's ended up in Little Bridge which is mm. um, a place where I think a lot of people it's kind of almost the end of the world it's where people end up when they maybe don't know what else to do and it's during the course of the book maybe she finds herself mm -hmm. I'm just curious when you when you write like love interest do qualities come first, or does like the person's job and what they, their family, what mm. comes first when you think of them? Um, I think it all just comes at the same time, it, it comes together, but I think a lot of the time um, what they, kind of their place in the society where they're living has a lot to do with it, especially in this case, because, um, you know, where, especially where they meet. Why is he, why is he always at the cafe in the morning and so that she's waiting on him? That had a lot to do with his, his growth as a character. Nice. Well, those are my book-related questions. Oh, thank you. They were um, great. Yeah, and if you guys, it comes out in September, but you can get a little taste of Little Bridge with the novella Bridal Bootcamp. Bridal Camp. Bootcamp, Available yeah, exactly. now, so go check that out. Um, do we have any questions? We do. Oh. We have a lot of fans, a lot of questions. Yay! Um, let's see here. Well, we have super fan Abby Burke, who exclaims, new series? Yes. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> And then she adds, wrote out Irma too, read, she went all the way during it. <laughs> so there you go. That's a good reading choice right? for a hurricane. Uh, and she also adds, Doritos are essential storm supplies. <laughs> so Abby's know. on point right now. Um, so let's see here. Annie Elizabeth asks, when writing a story inspired at least in part by true events, how did you decide which details to keep true to your experience and which to fabricate or amp up for the story? 
Hmm. Well, I definitely asked permission or at least, um, you know, let people know that I was going to be writing about them a little bit. Um, it was kind of hard to get a hold of Brit because she's, uh, she's a boat captain in real life. I know. She's so, so cool. cool. <laughs> I know. Um, but I would want her to come save my dog. The or, local paper yeah. just ran a big story about her. Um, so she knows about that. Um, but I didn't want to have her personal life in it right. because also I wanted her to, that I wanted Brie, the character to have a romance. As I said, Brit is very happily, um, already in a relationship. So, you know, you want to have a story arc that is interesting. And so the people who I was writing about, most of them already have a great life and you kind of got to have your character go through some stuff yeah. in order to have a book about them. So, um, I, I didn't use anything from Brit's actual personal life. I only used what she did, which during the hurricane, which was an amazing, amazing thing. And I didn't use her job because Brit has a great, amazing <laughs> job as a boat captain. And, um, I also know nothing about that, so I kind of, you want to write about stuff you actually know about. Um, I know about being a waitress from having done that a little bit, um, and I know about um, being an artist, which Brit is. I, I love to paint, and I was in art school and stuff, so um, I think that you got to put in a little bit of yourself, too, in order to make the story interesting to you to write about, so um, even though you're writing maybe about other people that you find interesting, um, you also have to put in a lot of your own heart because mm -hmm. that's what keeps you people are always asking how do you write so many books and how do you sit there and write a whole book and the way that you do that is you write something that you feel passionately about mm -hmm. and that you um, understand and love or hate too hatred is a strong it's motivator a love, if you're I've really heard. mad about something which I was really mad about for instance the guy who kicked the dog or um, you know Maybe I was judging people who left their animals behind, but through writing this book, I, be, I got a better understanding of how these circumstances can happen, and so mm -hmm. I'm not as judgy. I certainly, when I'm watching the news and I hear about people who don't evacuate, I'm certainly one of those people who's like, why didn't they evacuate? Well, now I understand how it can mm -hmm. happen, and so I think that that's an important thing. Yeah. What else? What else do we have? Let's see. Sarah Elizabeth Santana asks... How do you go back and forth between YA and adult romance? Is it hard? Hmm. No, it's actually really good because I think that if I had to just write one thing all the time, um, I would get so sick of it. So it's actually really nice to swap back and forth. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, in these books, you get to have really hot sex scenes. <laughs> <laughs> Not as hot as some other people's, but mine are pretty hot. Um, but in YA, you kind of... Um, it's not the the temperature level is not that high at least in my YA, um, and I also love writing about people's parents and mm -hmm. having to um, maybe go to a dance or something um, or a talent show, which grown ups don't get to do that much. Have <laughs> you know it? Maybe they get to go to a wedding, but yeah, the fun. I mean, when's the last time it. you went to a dance? I can't tell you. I know, me too. So yeah, I think that adults get to do fun other things that are fun, but not like kids get to do. Um, Maybe we should throw a dance. Camp. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, adults, camp. we go on vacation, but I guess. it's not the same. So it's there's different, so it's, I actually like switching back and forth. Let's see. Katie Ellsworth asks, will there be any more Heather Wells mysteries in the future? I don't know. We'll see. Maybe. Not, not right now. Right now we're concentrating on uh, the little bridge. That is enough. <laughs> I'm tired. I tried to count. <laughs> And I don't even know if I got them all, yeah. but I think I was like age nine. It's, it's a lot. I've not tried to count. Yeah. yeah. You guys can dive in if you, you know, yeah. you can always find something for your mood. Or... Yeah. <laughs> so Little Bridge is the, the foreseeable. Yeah, I got a DC, I've got a comic, uh, graphic novel, sorry, coming out with DC Comics in October, um, and that was uh, illustrated by Cara McGee, so that's amazing. So that's the other thing that's coming out, but then right now... Um, and more of this. <laughs> that's enough. Let's see. And again, we have so many comments just expressing their oh, love for you and your cool. work. Um, oh, thank so, you. Yes, feeling it. And uh, Raiza Pacheco, I hope I got that right, Raiza. Thank you. Um, does Brie have a best friend? I love all the Meg Cabot written BFFs. Brie has actually a roommate who she does not listen to, Danielle, <laughs> who's, I think, a great character. Um, I would actually be interested in exploring her further, um, who is really super fun. She's an emergency room nurse. 
who's based on a real emergency room nurse that I know, um, who actually get, is mandatorily evacuated because they mandatorily evacuate uh, all emergency room personnel. Um, so she's not in the book as much as I would have liked. Um, she also has a best friend back home in um, New York City who she kind of communicates a little bit with, um, who's like, evacuate, what's wrong with you? <laughs> um, so yeah, she does, but um, they're not, I, I feel like in the context of the book, if she'd had a best friend, who actually stayed, the best friend would have been like, get out! Yeah. <laughs> Which they all they all say, so no. Not really. She has lots of friends, but the BFFs are like, no, why are you doing this? You're insane. <laughs> um, we have a few questions about location from Courtney and Cassandra, who, um, let's see, respectively asked, are you back in NYC to get inspiration for new books slash series? <laughs> um, and then Cassandra says, you are my favorite author. Everything about doing a book in Wisconsin. So oh. maybe how does location oh, that's take interesting. Play? Yeah. Um, I'm actually back in New York City because, um, well, I live here part of the time, so I, I have a place here. Um, but I've been doing a lot of um, conferences. So we had BEA, we had, um, right, this next week we're doing Romance Writers of America. Yes. So and you were at ALA with us. I was at ALA, um, which actually was in D.C., but that, the convenient part about that, besides mm. that it was super fun, is that my mom lives in Annapolis, so I went oh, to visit nice. her, so that was really fun. Um, and then I went to ABA in Pittsburgh. So I've just been doing a ton of conferences. And also, um, New York is one of the best places to hang out. I mean, it's, it's been super fun. I did bring my cat, um, the toothless <laughs> cat. She's kind of handling it I don't she mm. you know she's used to going outside at least for a little while every day so she's a little sad just looking out the window um and it's too hot tell as, her it's, it's yeah stay inside like, yeah, air no. conditioner um but as far as going uh doing a book in Wisconsin I would probably have to go there for a little while and check it out I've been there it's oh, beautiful really? um but I would you know I'd want to get a feel for the place uh, and Cassandra was actually pushing for you to do a book tour in Wisconsin. So oh, oh, a there. book tour. Okay, yeah. sure. Yeah, I've done. I've been there a few times, but I I don't have any um, specific book events scheduled. I will have to talk to Pam Jaffe. Yes, well, the she's great. Yeah, yeah, we'll see. She'll see what she can do. Push also. for your bookstore to yeah. invite me. That's what. Yeah. Or library. And library. Yes. Or library. Sorry, yes. <laughs> Both. Library. Book festival. Whatever. Yes. Well, I think that does it for okay. our questions. Oh, that was great. That was a lot of fun. That was fun. I'm, Do you like a Dorito yeah, or I'm an M&M? &M? Well, first I'm going to start with an M&M. &M. Nice. Um, I mean, I always start with dessert start first. With oh, that's smart. So, yeah. That's smart. I'm going to okay. go with a Dorito. Yeah, and I'm going to switch it up. Thank you so much, you guys. That was really fun. Thanks for coming. Um, look out for this book and then more books. Mm-hmm. That's not My like, Dorito like eating. That's not like a warning. It wasn't <laughs> Watch a warning. Watch out for hurricanes, a, not yeah. this book. And evacuate. If you're told to <laughs> evacuate, if you can't evacuate, then obey all your local right. um, city ordinances yes. and and uh, warnings, yes. And check out the novella that's available now. Oh, I yeah. mean, this will be September 24th. Thank you. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you for having me. That was so fun. Oh, and a... Thank you. Oh, yeah. And a toast. Cheers. Yay. Thanks so much Bye, for joining us, everyone. Again, No Judgments is coming this September. For librarians watching, the eGalley is available now, so do check it out and share the love uh, with your coworkers and patrons. Everyone's really excited. Thanks, Meg. Thank you.